The last unit of this module is about computer-supported collaborative learning. Um, a, a nice uh, topic to end this module and also this course. Um, first, we will uh, dive into some theoretical considerations. Then we will discuss the knowledge building communities or the knowledge forum project. Uh, we will discuss findings related to collaborative learning, uh, writing, sorry, and then we will uh, eventually discuss a more theoretical issue confronting cognitions in dialogues, the work by Jerry Andriessen of Utrecht University. First, some uh, theoretical considerations. Um, this is already uh, old stuff, so I hope you remember that we discussed the work by Johnson & Johnson in, uh, in the module on uh, learning as a social process. Uh, Johnson & Johnson distinguished five characteristics um, of uh, effective cooperative groups. I just uh, bring them back in your memory and activate them in order that we can use them for uh, the, 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 the following uh, the, uh, discussions. Um, first, there should be positive interdependence between the members of the group, which, which means that the activities of one member positi positively influence the activities of other members of the group. Uh, then there is individual accountability, which uh, has to say that uh, individual members of the group do feel responsible for their own learning, but also for the group products, uh, for what the group establishes. Um, and then there is promotive interaction, which means uh, that uh, group members support each other, give feedback to each other's work, uh, help each other, etc., etc. So all kinds of positive interactions between the members of the group. The group members also possess the necessary social skills in order to make the, the group function effectively. And uh, finally, there is also uh, a group awareness, a group identity, the group reflects on its functioning, on its, uh, let's say, positive results and also on its problems uh, which have to be overcome. And this group processing uh, definitely contributes to uh, the uh, operation, the effective operation of cooperative groups. So keep this in mind when we discuss uh, other uh, work and other projects. The first project we would like to discuss is a knowledge building project by um, uh, Scaramalia and Breiter. Um, Scaramalia and Breiter are um, uh, researchers working at the Ontario Institute for the Study of Education in Toronto. Um, they have been working for a long period of time on this, um, on this and other issues. Um, I remember that uh, we organized the National uh, Educational Research Conference, the Onderwijsdagen, at uh, the VU, uh, de Vrije Universiteit, in I think it was 2006. And I uh, happened to be uh, the chair of the conference, and so I could invite the, key, the, 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 the most important keynote speaker. And I decided to invite Carl Breiter, uh, who, uh, uh, much to my uh, uh, happiness actually did uh, agree to come. So he came with his wife Mar uh, Marlene Scardamalia and when I uh, met them uh, for the first time I uh, suddenly realized that uh, Karl Breiter was already over 70 years of age. So that was uh, 10 years ago at least so I, he must be over 80 now but still a very very productive uh, together with his wife now in, in this area of knowledge building. Um, um, first, uh, the definition, uh, knowledge building is, is uh, defined by Scaramalia and Breiter as uh, the production and continual improvement of ideas of value to a community. Um, um, what the community accomplishes will be greater than the sum of individual contributions and part of broader cultural efforts. So interesting to see here that uh, um, knowledge building is definitely something which, um, which um, relates to 
what Breiter and Scalimaria call the design mode of knowledge. Uh, so the design mode of thinking about knowledge is that knowledge is constantly being created, being improved, being uh, uh, enriched and adapted, etc. So th th this is a very dynamic view on knowledge construction, whereas the belief mode is the view that knowledge is something the out there on the table which has to be verified which can be true or false and uh, the falsehood or to the, the truth value of, of knowledge should constantly be uh, argued about and debated and tested etc so the belief mode is a more static idea of, about knowledge it's just there and you have to 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 uh, more or less um, um, get acquainted with it uh, you have to master it and you may have to make a, a, a fair distinction between false and true uh, knowledge. Whereas in the design mode, this, this issue of false, uh, falsehood and tr truth of knowledge is not s s so important. Uh, important is that knowledge is never finished and that it should always be improved and made a, a, a better representation of the real world, so to speak. So these different modes uh, are important and what, what um, uh, Scalimalia and Bereiter emphasize is that children already in primary education should learn to work not only in the belief mode which is the default mode uh, in our Western society but also learn to work in the design mode of uh, working of, 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 of creating knowledge and that experience will help them you know when they have been uh, grown up and uh, adults and, 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 and start a professional life. Uh, that's one thing and the other thing is that, that learning and knowledge building are not the same. So uh, the process of knowledge building creates a joint product in the group and it is not necessarily also a contribution to the individual student's knowledge. Um, so a teacher should be aware of that fact and should in fact help students to master uh, their understanding and also test uh, their understanding in order to be able to give feedback to the students etc so you should distinguish these two uh, cognitive activities and not consider knowledge building uh, uh, per se as also contributing to the individual students learning processes okay um, that's uh, let's say a bit for, uh, as far as the theory is concerned um, 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 what I forgot to say is um, we see now the, the, the overview, we should have seen that before, but that uh, there is a danger of shallow constructivism, as, as Scardamalia and Breiter call it. Um, as, uh, 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 they mean that, that often students are in, engaged in projects and do all kinds of uh, creative work in, in, class, in the classroom without understanding the meaning of that activity, <coughs> and without, without understanding the relationship between that activity and the big ideas in the curriculum they're working on. And uh, as long as they do not grasp this relationship and this connectedness, <coughs> their work is perhaps constructive, but it is of a shallow constructivism because it, it is not in depth related to uh, a body of knowledge which is being built and which is being improved, etc. And that's a danger, of course, because th in that case, students do not really understand what they are doing and they may be less motivated to continue to work in these kinds of projects. Okay, so that danger is overcome by creating such a, uh, a design mode of thinking about knowledge and uh, this knowledge building, let's say, opportunities in, uh, in, in the classroom. And how do you go along with that? <coughs> Well, you transform classrooms uh, in, in knowledge building communities by, in fact, uh, creating communities of learners. That's the good news because we have already been discussing these communities of, le of learners at length in, in two uh, f previous modules. And, uh, you know, in these communities, students uh, f are taken seriously as, as partners in knowledge development. Uh, there is the, the inquiry mode of learning which is the basic pedagogical strategy there is the relationship with the big ideas uh, there are the, 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 the developments of skills for communication for research for collaboration there is reflection as a very important mode of bringing 
uh, individual experiences and outcomes of, of experience together uh, and, and, and unite them at a higher level, <coughs> at a higher level of, of uh, abstraction. And there are the, the, the tools, of course, available for everybody. Now, these six characteristics, you of course, you, you already know them by heart. They are relevant here in this knowledge forum, knowledge building community uh, context. But there is also, of course, the technological uh, co uh, innovation and there uh, uh, the knowledge forum come in, comes into play. The, the, the website or the, 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 the web-based uh, tool which helps students to organize their knowledge, their, their newly created knowledge, their, the concepts they bring together and, and, and it helps them to relay these concepts. Let's have a look at it. Uh, you can see here um, uh, knowledge forum. I've, I've copied a picture which is perhaps not that much uh, a clear um, uh, from one of the papers of uh, uh, Scardamalia and Bereiter. Uh, I'll try to, to enlarge it a little bit. So, so you have various panels here, like, like you know, we saw in the, uh, in the web, uh, uh, the, the inquiry-based learning uh, projects, various panels where you can do work, where you can actually uh, uh, make notes, connections between notes, where you can organize uh, your knowledge in concepts uh, and where you also can uh, uh, further elaborate on, on various concepts and uh, where you can in fact uh, c create other uh, as well as uh, other graphical representations of uh, the world uh, which is around uh, or which is the context of the specific topic you're studying. Um, so these are all panels which help uh, groups of students to build knowledge. Let's see what, uh, what, 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 what is in, 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 in included in these panels. Um, first of all, you have the multimedia notes, the graphical views where notes can be linked, commented on and subsumed in higher level synthesis. This is interesting because we were talking about, you know, reflection, which helps uh, students to bring uh, their, their, their experiences or also their, their, their findings at a higher level of abstraction. Here you have a tool um, which creates uh, um, uh, higher level concepts which subsume already existing concepts um, and, and, and in this way synthesize the, the knowledge which is being created. Now these tools are um, um, uh, available to, to organize knowledge, but there is also the possibility to structure the information in each of the concepts being developed by using scaffolds, by indicating what kind of information is in the concept. For instance, this is my theory, or this is new information, or this theory explains th these and this phenomena, or this theory it cannot explain these phenomena, so we need another theory. So these, these scaffolds help you to organize your, 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 your representation of concepts um, and, and helps you to, to, to clarify what you mean when you add a particular concept to a network of, of, of concepts. Okay, so this is basically a, just a view, just a small idea of what Knowledge Forum is about. You should read the papers by Scardamalia and Bereiter. There are various papers available uh, to give you a better uh, idea and a more in-depth look into their uh, project. Okay, <coughs> that's uh, uh, what, what, what Knowledge Forum is about. And now I would like to say a few words uh, in, the, in, the, in the context of uh, computer-supported collaborative learning about collaborative writing. I used a paper uh, written by uh, De Smet and Hilde van Keer. Uh, Hilde is also a very active member of ECO, by the way. Um, a research synthesis on uh, effective writing instruction in primary education. So this is about primary education. I will also say a few words about uh, writing, collaborative writing in the university context. First, uh, a definition. Let's see. Well, it's, it's, it's quite straightforward. An iterative and social process that involves a team on a common objective that negotiates, coordinates and communicates uh, during the creation of a common product, co common uh, text. 
Of course, we, we, we know the, uh, the original flower and haze model, which we discussed back in one of the uh, modules on, 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 I think it was uh, memory and cognition, uh, where we learned that, that uh, planning and, and uh, organizing ideas and revising uh, are different and important steps in the process of creating a, um, a text. Um, and these processes are also embedded, you know, in group work, as you see that the group negotiates and coordinates and then communicates the creation during the creation of common products. Groups have characteristics, as we saw uh, when we referred to uh, Johnson & Johnson. So it is important that group members are engaged with each other that, that so there is promotive uh, uh, collaboration within the group and uh, that they are engaged with the topic and the writing process. These are all important preconditions in order to make a group successful in a joint uh, writing project. There has to be a certain level of co cognitive conflict so the members need to reach a consensus. So there has to be a problem. Like we discussed, you know, in the context of uh, inquiry-based uh, learning, there has to be a problem, a, a conflict, something which is, does not, uh, in which um, expect, uh, expectations and reality do not meet and do not match, and which has to be solved. Um, the group members, of course, have to trust each other, which is very important in, in a group uh, activity, and the group has to be structured. For instance, by using different roles, adopting different roles like writer, consultant, editor, reviewer, team leader, facilitator. These roles are very helpful uh, to make the group effective and it's also uh, a, a good experience for students to practice with each of these roles in, in different uh, configurations um, uh, because then students uh, learn to collaborate and learn these cooperation skills which are so important also for their professional life. Okay, um, what kind of collaboration practices and strategies do we uh, observe in primary education? And I also added some of the experiences in university education. Well, in primary education, you see that paired writing is often done. So couples, uh, groups of two students, a cross age peer tutoring in which uh, uh, older students help younger uh, kids uh, in their activities peer feedback and also, of course, group discussions uh, which lead to a joint product. Um, there is a parallel with uh, university education. Uh, I, I, I base this, this sequence of five um, activities or practices and strategies on the paper by Anrubia and Engel in Computers and Education, uh, uh, Strategies, Collaborative Writing and Faces of Knowledge Construction in, in CSCL Environments. What you see here is uh, there is an increasing amount of in, in, in integration in these activities. The first um, uh, and, and, the, and the simplest form of collaboration perhaps is the situation in which students uh, actually uh, contribute by um, handing in parts of the final text. So each and every student writes a part of the final text and these parts are just glued together. Uh, by cut and paste in order to create a, a, a joint text which is uh, in fact uh, not more than the sum of the constituent parts. It is also possible that, that all students write several parts of the text so that there is overlap between the individual contributions of the students and then we are at the second level and then there has to be some negotiation in order to arrive at a joint uh, product. Um, that's perhaps already a better situation. You can also imagine that students uh, take responsibility for the whole the organization of the text as a whole and that uh, so some of the students do um, uh, create the, 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 the backbone of the text and other students uh, provide, uh, um, uh, again, provide parts of the text and then there has to be also an in, in, in a sort of summative construction process in order to get one text. And you can also imagine that there are parts of the text which are written by uh, two uh, students. Uh, I mean, uh, there are two texts de uh, delivered, which, all, uh, which both relate to the same part of the text, the same paragraph. And then there has to be some sort of negotiation in order to arrive at a joint uh, end product. 
And of course, you can imagine that discussion and writing and discussion and writing are interchangeably uh, uh, connected in order to write uh, to arrive at a really jointly constructed text. And then we are at level five of integrated text construction. So this is a sort of uh, scale uh, with, with more and more integration and joint activities uh, as far as the group is concerned. Okay. Yes, technology can support, of course, all these processes at various levels. Y you can imagine that technology provides word, uh, it pro provides support at the very technical level of writing itself by uh, using word processors and exchanging texts which uh, have been prepared in, in, in a word processor. That's very straightforward and, and you can nowadays, uh, it's difficult to imagine that you do not use a word processor. Although I, I, must, uh, I must say that uh, I think uh, when I was still at Leiden University, so 15 years ago, there were a lot of uh, colleagues who did not accept uh, texts uh, through email but uh, only were, uh, 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 let's say, willing to consider texts which were handed in on paper um, uh, through the, the, the surface mail. Um, and, and so that you see a lot has changed in between the last 15 years, let's say. You can also think of technology-enabled writing. So um, here you, you, you provide more tools to, to share and edit texts new sources as well, internet, you can imagine. And you can imagine that you have negotiation tools in order to arrive at joint uh, conclusions. Uh, not simple, the text, pro the word processor, but also uh, more advanced tools in which you can, like we saw in Knowledge Forum, uh, arrange ideas and, uh, and uh, uh, create uh, in that way sort of a joint representation of the text. And finally, at the, at the most uh, complex level, the most advanced level, you can use uh, instruments to write hypertexts, so texts with words referring to other words in the text or referring to other paragraphs in the text or referring to sources outside the text. These, uh, these so-called hyperlinks are embedded in hypermedia and when you are writing, let's say, on a wiki, uh, for instance, there are many, many uh, tools available nowadays to create wikis, joint wikis. Then you are at the most uh, advanced level of multimedia writing of uh, technology support in the collaborative writing process. Okay, um, back to the work by De Smet and uh, Van Keer. Uh, they observed uh, practices which they considered as, as, uh, um, uh, as uh, potentially helpful in primary education. And uh, their most important uh, advice is to combine strategy instruction, so structure, with collaborative writing, with creative opportunities to write. So doing, uh, so practice, practice is important, practice is important as we saw earlier. Uh, but you can practice, structure practice by providing appropriate strategy instruction. Both are necessary. Uh, that's the, the advice by De Smet and Van Keer. They will both, uh, so the combination will enhance knowledge transmission as well as knowledge construction. Here we return to the idea uh, of, uh, of uh, Scarimalia and the writer that uh, it's not self-evident or not always the case that knowledge construction is accompanied by learning, so by knowledge transmission in the words of uh, Van Keer and De Smet. But you can also expect an increase of the quality of students' writing, as well as an increase in the motivation of students to write, if you combine uh, appropriate strategy instruction with collaborative writing practices. And of course, you should um, and, and, uh, integrate ICT tools with these instructional approaches, which does make sense in the context of this uh, unit on uh, computer-supported collaborative learning. Okay, the last topic to address is uh, the topic of confronting cognitions in dialogues or argumentative interactions. I, I do like to, to refer to the work of Jerry Andresen, 
who used to be uh, working at Utrecht University Department of Education. He ha has done very important work on uh, collaborative learning, particularly on, on, on uh, dialogues in which students exchange ideas, in which they argue and in which they want to arrive at uh, joint conclusions by arguments, by argumentative interactions or dialogues. Uh, um, uh, he has written a lot and you, I have just entered one reference, uh, but there are many other references you could make use of to learn more about this important work by uh, Jerry Andriessen um, and his colleagues at uh, Utrecht uh, University. Um, okay, first a uh, few words about dialogues, then a few words about learning and arguing, then about CSCL tools, of course, in the context of this uh, unit, and then uh, a few words about the educational context in which these dialogues might flourish. First of all, uh, a few uh, more uh, uh, conceptual, conceptual uh, issues. What do we, uh, what, do, what does Jerry Anderson um, um, uh, mean by argumentative interactions? Well, it's a matter of producing arguments and comparing arguments using a variety of types of reasoning. And of course, you can imagine that in his papers, he is uh, elaborating on all these types of reasoning by, by uh, uh, of course, uh, using uh, the uh, argument theory, uh, theoretical approaches uh, from uh, philosophy. Um, well, of course, there is something which you are arguing about as one of the characteristics of, of an argumentative interaction. There's, of course, the media, uh, there are the media of expression. So whether it's on paper and pencil, whether you talk, whether you use com uh, computers of other, or other uh, tools to, uh, to do the dialogue. And there's the wider situation in which the dialogue uh, takes place. So the context. And, uh, of course, there are local goals of argumentation, arriving at a consensus or solving a problem or uh, sorting out, you know, various points of view. And there, are, are, there can be many, many goals uh, to which uh, uh, argument, uh, argumentative interactions work. Um, so these are some characteristics of dialogues of argumentative interactions. Well, the, the question is uh, whether students learn from arguing. Uh, it's a bit uh, related to the question whether students learn from, uh, from, um, from knowledge construction or whether students learn from writing. Um, and the interesting thing is here that, that, that Jerry does provide some uh, mechanisms which may help students to actually um, uh, arrive at, uh, at learning outcomes. Um, well, uh, how do students learn from arguing? Well, they do learn when there is a reflection. We have seen that uh, time and again that reflection is important also in the community of learners context. context, uh, context and when they uh, do a restructure their knowledge. So there has to be some sort of change in their view on what their, uh, their, 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 what, what they think about a particular subject. So there should be, uh, some, some things should change and then you can say that, stu that the, the participants in an argument really learn. And when they uh, uh, do reflect on the value of their positions or the, uh, the value of various positions taken in an argumentative uh, interaction. Um, it is also, so now we talk about sort of cognitive effects, uh, so learning at a cognitive level, but it is also true that arguments often modify underlying attitudes and uh, in this way lead to reconsidering beliefs, perhaps losing rigid positions. And then it's, it's completely clear that something has been learned. So when the underlying attitudes are addressed as well in an argumentative interaction, then there is an even a more important result um, uh, of the argumentation. And of course, new knowledge and understanding can be co-constructed in an argumentation. Um, so that is the same uh, what happens as we discussed in knowledge forums, so in knowledge building communities. 
and then so this is when this is the case that's okay that's important that's fine but still we need of course some extra mechanisms in order to to enable students individual students to learn from this core construction it's not a self-evident so that would be a comment i think but that Karl Breiter should uh, would make Baraj and Scardamalia would make on this particular uh, mechanism. It's not really a mechanism. It's just uh, a, ref a reference to something which has to happen uh, on top of this uh, knowledge construction. Yes, but, but but the reflection and the knowledge structuring is important, and addressing the underlying attitudes is also very important. What kind of CSCL tools, tools can you um, uh, actually use in uh, these uh, interactive, uh, argumentative interactions in these dialogues? First of all, uh, a sort of um, a, a relativistic remark, um, which I just noted down uh, from one of the papers of Jerry Anderson. Um, he um, really contends that nonverbal cues like intonation and facial expressions and gesture and of course the cost of utterance production when you you have to type your answers or your your, your arguments in uh, with a keyboard uh, these these the, the loss of these cues and and the and the cost of these uh, utterance productions may make an arc an dialogue more difficult and that's the reason why i must admit my, my i myself did not uh, very much do with the work uh, of the of the group in Utrecht because I always had a feeling that they were creating very artificial situations with their computer programs in which students were uh, arguing. Um, but, but now that I more more intensely read these uh, papers, I must admit that I think that uh, the, the, the the work ha has been very important and influential. So I, I do agree with this caveat, but I also agree with the advantages of using CSCL tools for dialogues, uh, which uh, Jerry also mentions. Uh, first of all, you can structure uh, the, the process. You can provide message categories or sentence openers, like it was done in, in, in a knowledge forum, we discussed that, and that helps to structure the process of thinking, the process of knowledge construction the process of arguing and that is of course a very positive contribution to the process of, uh, the, uh, of uh, uh, argumentative uh, interactions or di uh, carrying out dialogues. You can also um, um, uh, provide tools to represent the, the product of the argument uh, as we have seen again with uh, in, in knowledge forum concepts concept maps uh, they provide a language to represent ideas and the language to communicate about ideas and these uh, functions are very important in creating effective arguments. So the arguments may in fact uh, um, um, may be clarified by using these uh, concept maps and other tools to represent the product of the argument. And then there can be an, an, uh, of course an active guidance of the argument for instance, by comparing student sentence openers, the use of student sentence openers to an ideal model of interaction uh, to generate a tutoring plan. So here we might have the idea, which is also laid down in, um, in um, intelligent tutoring systems, that there is something like an ideal uh, a model, so the expert model, and there is something like the way the student behaves, the student model, for instance, by using sentence openers or categories of messages, and, and you may compare what the student does with the ideal model, and then, uh, like in, uh, in an ITS, provide, you know, uh, a guidance, active guidance to structure and to to structure the argumentation and, and to make it more beneficial. So these are in fact important CSCL tools which may uh, and encourage and, uh, students to, uh, to create uh, sound and, and valid arguments and may also foster the quality of the arguments. Okay. In what kind of educational context do you think that these uh, uh, dialogues can take place? Now, um, uh, Jerry Anderson and Jacobijn Sandberg uh, uh, already made this list of three uh, uh, educational contexts um, 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 in which you can in envisage uh, that uh, dialogue is well uh, is very uh, helpful or not. 
uh, I, I really uh, rephrased a little bit the names of these contexts to make um, their point of view and their characteristics uh, clearer in the context of this discussion of computer-supportive collaborative learning. A transmission is the classical situation, um, um, individual learning, personal understanding, collaboration can be done to attain domain-specific knowledge, but it is a matter of, you know, just following what has been explained or uh, expressed by the teacher. So, uh, argumentative interactions cannot really change a thing here, so they are not very, I must say, very helpful. Um, but when you focus on, uh, and then we are at the second level, a more deep level, you might say, uh, on self the development of self-regulation and metacognitive skills, then, of course, collaborative learning is one of the skills to be mastered. So you, you have to comment as a teacher on the quality of collaboration and make it as a, a topic for discussion or a, a topic of learning itself. So discussing viewpoints and integrating personal beliefs and other people's uh, ideas and information from different sources uh, in, in the process of argumentative learning, that these are very important goals and objectives in an, an educational context in which uh, self-regulation and the development of metacognitive skills is one of the objectives. So there you can benefit a lot from uh, uh, um, uh, argumentative interactions, from dialogues. And then we arrive at, at the situation where we actually uh, adopt the uh, the design mode of knowledge where you are working on knowledge building, establishing learning groups, engaged in knowledge building and uh, collective thinking, collaborative knowledge building and uh, communities of practice are irrelevant concepts of course and you can imagine that in such an educational context uh, dialogues are indeed very very beneficial to the, the objectives of the learning uh, of the, the, the curriculum, uh, namely to create knowledge, to create new knowledge. And in that context, I think uh, arguments, uh, dialogues will flourish a lot and uh, will really help to, uh, to arrive at these new, new ideas and new knowledge. Okay, so that was uh, to end this uh, particular uh, um, unit on computer supportive collaborative learning, a more in depth discussion of important characteristics of uh, um, the process of knowledge building, the process of arguing um, in order to create new knowledge and uh, the mechanisms which uh, help to create new knowledge, which make people, uh, students learn and the educational context in which these um, uh, dialogues, these uh, argumentative interactions may flourish. Well, that ends the discussion of this unit and that also ends the discussion uh, the, uh, of this whole module. Uh, let's go back to the objective of this module to see whether we actually accomplished what we planned to do. We have discussed and um, 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 uh, elaborated on the theoretical backgrounds of multimedia learning, learning technology-enhanced learning environments, learning analytics, and uh, uh, eventually uh, the last unit on computer-supported collaborative learning. So we did address these theoretical backgrounds even more, I think, than uh, perhaps in other modules. And that's the funny and the interesting thing about you know multimedia learning. As I said, uh, these multimedia tools um, um, create new opportunities for learning, for learning and teaching, and they actually invite you to reconsider um, uh, old concepts uh, as as uh, as far as learning and teaching is concerned, and and reconsider their value and perhaps elaborate on their value. So they really stimulate uh, uh, thinking uh, in the design mode about you know the processes of teaching and learning which makes this module, I think, at the end of our journey to, uh, uh, through uh, the, the, the concepts underlying teaching and learning, uh, an interesting uh, last module. Okay, we, we talked about cognitive load, especially in the context of, of Meyer's uh, multimedia learning theory, um, and, and uh, we discussed ways to combine images and text to reduce cognitive load. We discussed the distinctions between computer-assisted instruction and intelligent tutoring systems and explored the, the value of each of these approaches. 
uh, we um, uh, did d discuss, you know, the um, characteristics of adolescents, who, who adolescents who, who may start to become uh, uh, addictive gamers, perhaps. So the, the, the process of gaming and, and serious gaming was considered, and also the, 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 the processes which make people so addicted to these, uh, uh, these games. Um, we were discussing uh, measures to decrease dropout rates indeed in, uh, in, the, in the massive open uh, 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 online courses. Um, the, the, these high dropout rates, as we, as we discussed, retention rates of 10 to, to 30%. We did discuss uh, learning analytics and also the SWOT analysis. And as I already announced, you will uh, be asked to use this SWOT analysis when you complete the assignments for this um, uh, for this uh, module. And then we we discussed the, the, the CSCL environments, various CSCL environments, the use of sentence openers um, and the use of scaffold the scaffolds in, in knowledge forum, and explain why these measures may uh, uh, contribute to uh, co uh, corporative learning and encourage students to embark on, on, on corporative learning. So in this way, we actually um, uh, finished the module on uh, multimedia learning. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this module as the last module in um, our program uh, on uh, teaching and learning. And uh, I hope you also um, felt that the module was a good opportunity to, to, to connect uh, um, uh, concepts which have already had already been introduced in previous mod modules. Okay, thank you for your attention.